Hi, I'm Apollonia. You may remember me from Purple Rain as leading lady to Prince, or from my band Apollonia 6. I've starred in films, TV shows, and I've been on the cover of magazines all over the world, including Playboy. I was also an LA Rams cheerleader. I'm going to take you with me. Welcome to my podcast, Apollonia Studio 6. Didn't you ever get, didn't you ever argue? It's like, yeah, we argued. I never legally, I never sued him because I don't sue anybody. That's not my, you know, that's not my life. And I always say he was Goliath. I was David, hmm. you know, and I was terrified. I was just a kid. You know, I want to sue him. No. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I think, a- yeah, I think that's probably why we had friendship for so many years, 33 years, because yeah. I didn't put up with him, but I didn't sue him, and we would disagree, but we always maintained a friendship. I think you were in a singular position, though, about you were co- co-starring in Purple Rain. Right. So you had a, a level of, of history that, that wasn't necessarily musical, because you've said you didn't go into this as a musician. You went right. into this as an actor. As an actor, right. an actor playing a musician. Right. And, and I think that, that you had a certain clout with that, that, that uh, was different than some other people. I had so, the confidence, I think, that yeah, I had already, yeah. you know, been on many sets yeah. and knew my props, and so that I knew that once I was on a set with Prince, you know, as an actor, you know, I didn't see him as my equal because he'd never been in films before. So that's where I felt that I had leverage. Wow. <laughs> you know, that I felt. But when it came to going into the warehouse once, we went into the warehouse, and he's got you know a bunch of fold-up chairs, and he goes on this little stage, and he says, I could play every instrument up here. And I sat down, and I said, that's great. That's wonderful. He goes, you want to see? And I said, sure. So he picked up every instrument and started playing. And at the end, he just does this, right, like that bow. And I stood up, and I said, and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, oh, my God, what have I got myself into? He is a genius. <laughs> And I was really terrified at the time. I remember I felt like I was going to cry. And I was like, oh, my God. I was scared mm-hmm. because I saw the genius at that moment. Right. And he had to do it. You know, he's, that's when he was like, mm, I got you here. You might be able to, you know, outact. But he was, I thought, amazing as an actor in the film. Can I ask you a question about this? Sure. How did you feel when you saw the film for the first time? Now, there's some, the music mm-hmm. is, obviously, the musical performances are incredible. Right. And it's literally a lot of music videos kind of tacked together with, mm-hmm. a, with a storyline. There's some abusive stuff in there. Yes. There's some stuff that hasn't aged as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're naked, yes. basically, almost. Yeah. I remember that summer seeing that movie and going, oh, 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 <laughs> this is amazing. Who are you calling home? <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking, oh, there's music in this movie too. Um, oh, I- but I, I remember all of us had the biggest crush on you. Um that was the and, and, and looking saying this now, but th- there there are parts of this movie that were that was the romantic movie to see. Even though that you look back and you're like, "Ooh, that was a mm-hmm. there's some stuff that's not." Yeah, you know, it did. There's certain parts that did not age well with mm-hmm. his being, you know, abusive. It's the story he's telling, right? But it, throwing a woman in the dumpster and dumpster yeah, and that's stuff like that. a lot there's of misogyny. Things, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that did not. But at the time, I remember the, the romance between you two was pretty hot. Mm-hmm. And and I remember seeing that movie several times on several different dates. And and, <laughs> and, and uh, I was living in Ocean City, Maryland at the time. And it was that was the the, the movie that summer. Yeah. And, and and When Doves Cry was the 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 song of the, the summer. song. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah. That was but what did you feel when you saw your naked self up there for the first time and thinking did you think my family's gonna be seeing yes. this? Yeah. My first thought was my dad's gonna see this. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, brothers. Um I saw the dailies. Mm-hmm. I would watch them with Prince. But I I have never sat, I know, I have never sat and watched the entire movie from beginning to end, the whole thing. I've seen bits and pieces. And when we've done premieres all over the world, they would take you in once it started in the dark and they usher you out before it finished. So I've never sat with the entire, even when Prince and I went to go see it with Bobby Z and his wife, uh, here in Westwood, we came in at the end. I mean, it came at you know the, at mm, after it started. Sat in the back, watched the audience, and then we left. So I've never watched the entire thing. 
you did scenes in the movie that didn't make the movie. Yes. There's the barn scene that yes. everybody talks about. Tell me about that. I know I'm interviewing you now. <laughs> no, but, that's just but, great. But I, this is the, the, as a fan. Ask me anything yeah, you like. I, this is, and I've, I've always had the ability to ask you this stuff, but I've never, you know, some of the stuff I'm going this as a fan, I'm, I'm curious. There was a barn scene. Tell mm-hmm. me, what, what was that? That was, I was nervous. That was the first time that we did anything that was intimate. We were in a barn and it was a closed set. I wore, you know, undies, and he had, un, you know, some undergarments, and it was just Al and Donald Thorne, our DP, cinematographer, and uh, Craig Denalt, our cameraman, and it was just us, and Prince was really nervous, and I was terrified, and if you look at the, the photos of stills, I'm perspiring like crazy because I'm <laughs> nervous, right? When I'm leaning down, I toss my hair over, so... You see my face in camera. And it was we were nervous. The one thing about Prince is when we did those scenes and I leaned down and, you know, Al was right there whispering. He says, you know, kiss him gently. Prince never took his eyes off my face. Oh, that's nice. That's correct. And that was, you know, the whole time, you know, his eyes were, he never looked at my chest. I am buxom, so I was very shy, you know. <laughs> And uh, it was it was tough, but Al Magnoli, being this wonderful director, made it just easy. Uh, he helped us to relax. He talked us through it. Nice. He would sit at the side. He was like, "Okay, now kiss like two little birds flying in the air." He had the funniest descriptions on you know direction, but he made it safe for us. Yeah. And Prince was wonderful with me. And that you was know? your first romantic scene with him. With him, with yes. Prince. Yep. Okay. They threw us to the dogs at the beginning. You know, it's well, just like, one, get naked. Did, and did, Some of that was in the trailer of the movie. Yeah. And yes. some of that was a shot or two in, in When Doves Cry or what, what video it was. Mm-hmm. But, so all of us go, what is this scene? We, we can't see. Right. And then he does, you know, the Raspberry Beret. He sings right. about being in a barn. And we all like, is this from that? Right. I can only imagine what that must have been like. And again, you're climbing out of the lake. Right. You know. Now, the Raspberry it, Beret story... Uh, he took me over to, I believe it was called the Trident. It was these secondhand stores that he, we would go and mm, shop, and he right. would buy me little trinkets and all that. And he bought me a like a, a burgundy-colored beret with I still have. Mm. So when he did the animation, he goes, that's you and Kevin. That's who I was dating at the time, okay. Kevin Bernhardt, who I later, later married. Okay. You know, I was, We say in Hawaii, Howley, all-American guy. So that is supposed to be me. And Kevin in the animation. And supposedly the song is about, like, inspired by me, you know. And there was there's a line in there that says something about that she's not very smart or something. And I remember I was kind of upset about that. Or, so she some, wasn't too bright yeah, or something. And, and, yeah, something. And yeah, I go, well, what does that yeah. mean? And he was like, ah, yeah. So I don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> but he he would be, again, uh, inspired. I mean, she's always in my hair as Jill Jones. Mm-hmm. Yes. Know, so he, there were things that. that what, that beautiful he, ass? Hmm. That was wonderful. Wonderful ass. Wonderful, wonderful ass. vanity. Yeah. Vanity. Supposed to be a vanity. Yeah. But, you know, but again, that that's all these things. And I and something Jill said is is just because he says this part is about them doesn't mm-hmm. mean that there's other people that don't come into play here. Right. Right. You know, yep. he may pick up things and go, This is about Susanna, this is about Jill, mm-hmm. this is about Apollonia. Mm-hmm. All kind of, you know, kind of getting a big gumbo. Yeah. For <laughs> We're yeah. A stew. <laughs> exactly. You're drinking stew. And you guys are all important elements of that. Mm-hmm. I just am fascinated by this, you know, how, again, back to, did your family ever see Purple Rain? Yes, and, they were at the premiere. What, they did, were, they say, what did they say to you afterwards? They were proud. My good, father was good, crying. Good. You know, you could see him on the MTV video. Yeah, he had wow. tears in his eyes. They were proud of me. And they always knew, being that, you know, I always say, you know, I know I live here in Hollywood. I know where all the landmines are. And, you know, my dad was a, you know, journalist. At, you know, he did DJ work and Hispanic radio station. So we're from Hollywood. We're mm-hmm. here. Santa Monica yeah. Pier, you know, that's where I was conceived. I was born at St. John's. So I think they were accustomed to the industry. St. John's where? In Santa, St. John's here in Santa Monica. I think my daughter was born there. Really? I think so. Awesome. Yeah, I think Zoe was born there. So he you know, they were accustomed to the industry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'd go drive in and watch like four movies during the week on school nights. Jeez. Two nights, <laughs> yeah, four nights. My dad, he was a movie buff, so. so always, uh, the, I'm always curious about how families react to certain things because mm-hmm. I don't know if I saw my daughter in a movie where she's, you know, right. exposed. I'd be like, oh, this is 
this, yeah. this is awkward. I know, I, I'm, but I, I love the fact that he's proud of you and yeah. and that that he was celebrating it's what a, you've yeah. done. It's it was, a business. It, it was also it was a big event. That was the movie of the summer. That was, that yes, was, it was. That was a, and then the tour of the year. It, yeah. it, it was yeah. as the funny thing during that time, people forget that that was when the same year that the victory tour was happening. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I still think Purple Rain is the memorable tour. Yeah. Yeah. The victory tour, people kind of, Forget yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of these. It's the last tour the Jacksons did together. But yeah, that's right. It's, it's not forgotten, but it's not. It's not the tour. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, Purple Rain is. Yeah, and, and to think then we end up doing the red carpet at the Oscars. Is that crazy? That was shocking. Is that crazy? Yeah, that was and within just, a year. You're like you went from being and I needed Eddie Money's you know video, video and stuff like this, yeah. which I, I saw again recently. I was going, oh, I, that's Apollonia. You forget about these things, but then you do Purple Rain, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden the name Apollonia. Is still to this day, you know, forty years later, people mm. go, "Oh yeah, yeah, I, I know who Apollonia is." Yeah, or yeah. or we have like on social media, families that have named their kids poor things. Why would you name them <laughs> Apollonia? <laughs> and it's, oh it's my fascinating goodness. to me. I, I find that 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 how yeah. you know everybody in the movie except for Prince is is the name they end up using. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. Morris Day was Morris yes. Day, Jill Jones, Jill Jones. I'm you, were never, you were never Patty. Never. Now, here's a question I have for you is, and I've always been, I know that he had talked about Apollonia. Mm -hmm. Was Apollonia part of your name or is it part of your name afterwards? It was part of my name afterwards. Okay. Okay. It's so it wasn't like you're uh, like Patty, Apollonia. Okay. It was a no. name he brought to you and said. Right. And he you says are, you will always be you, Apollonia from are. this moment on. And you are. And I, to that yeah. day, he says, you never leave your home without makeup. You always get dressed up. He put a handbag on his arm. He says, you're going to walk from now on like your mother walks, you know, because you'd love my mom. I was like, <laughs> bombshell. So, in theory, I am always. For more than my entire life at the time I was 23. Mm -hmm. I'm 63 now. So, you know, more than half of my life, crazy? Because I you, am because Apollonia. You, you said, I like this name. Mm -hmm. I will make you that. And now all of a sudden you're that. Carmen Electra. Yes. Yeah. Carmen Electra. Yeah. She's, she's not... You know. Yep. He asked me, he goes, pick a letter from the alphabet. I said, A. He goes, why? A. I said, because it's number one. Nobody ever remembers who came in second. And he was like, oh. <laughs> or he did that, mm, you know, he do that face. And he goes, oh, this is the name, you know, Apollonia. After the Apollonian, the godfather, because mm -hmm. his, his wife. Like his wife. Because she had virgin breasts. That's what he said. He goes, you know, she's got virgin breasts. I was like, why is he telling me this? <laughs> you know? But, of course, those things, you know, back then were easy. You know, men spoke that way. And today he wouldn't be able to, you know. But the prince that we knew, you know, as an adult grown man in his 50s was accomplished, eloquent, was reading books. We were sending right. books to each other. You know, social, the social path within and a lot of different books we sent. He goes, be careful with people. So he sent me that book. But That was a good impression, was, by the way. That was a really good impression. <laughs> Eloquent, you know. And his vocabulary was, when you look at the beginning of Dick Clark, remember when he was like. Wouldn't talk. Couldn't talk because, you know, he's a quiver lip. I know what that's like, too. To the end when he was just, he was just brilliant in conversations. I think <clears throat> it was fun to watch him talk. He said so much and so little. Mm -hmm. You know, he would say, and so because he didn't talk except for his music, mm -hmm. it was fascinating to, when he did an interview with Arsenio or whoever it was. Mm -hmm. People pull everything they can from those things, right? Yeah. And one of the things he said about you was, you were what he said, was the quote I have it in the book where he said, "Apollonia is one of the sweetest people." Yes. And and I did a screenshot of that. That was in Ebony, mm -hmm. and I was yeah, just I, like, understandably, especially when I went to his house with the. Uh, with the ghetto blaster. <laughs> <laughs> I find that that's just a story I've never heard. And yeah. I love hearing those kind of stories. Well, yeah, there's more. There is well, a, I'm I sure. And I know more. you're writing a book. I know yes. you're going to write a book. Some are, there's too much to write because I have a life outside of Prince. You know, I dated David Lee Roth and I knew JFK Jr. And just a whole life beforehand. You right. know, the, the films and sure. miniseries and things that I did. I lived, you know, Mexico City as a kid. Oh, I didn't know that. All of that, so... 
See, and this is the thing that's fascinating to me. I, I, I told you before, I think you should write a book, and then you are. I know mm -hmm. you have to be because I said that. But, yeah. but just, yes, I am. Yeah, because you've got, you've got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you have a story to tell, and people ask me why I write books. Mm -hmm. And I write books because when you know good stories, right. how can you not write a book? Yeah. I always think that if you've got a great thing to say, right. and it's the truth, why wouldn't you write a book? It's like yeah. Prince's memoirs, right? Yeah. He he right. sets me up with the Chris Jackson. This was right before he passed away. He says, you're going to start writing your your biography. And I was like, what? And he says, I'm, I'm writing my biography. And I was like, what? On the phone. And then he, and I said, why? He was going to say, paid me a lot. <laughs> he starts doing that, a lot of money. And he goes, and you're going to do your book and I'm going to negotiate your deal. And then he sent, you know, set the scene. He sent an email to follow up. Stop telling your price of stories because he's going to do the reissue. This was for the 30th anniversary mm -hmm. release that I would get paid for my stories. He wanted me to do PR for the 30th release of Purple Rain. And he was going to negotiate my biography. I was in shock. I, was in, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? I was like, was that Prince or just a fake? Somebody's mm -hmm. faking me out, right, with a Prince voice or something. But... He was writing his story, which obviously he didn't finish. write that. He didn't yeah. finish. Yeah. He did handwrite everything that's in there. He, he hand wrote it, and it's in the book mm -hmm. of what he did. And the first thing he's talking about is his mother's eyes. And right. Like, it's very, I mean, the guy is so poetic. Right. I mean, yes. it's, 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 it's impossible to read his stuff and see his stuff and not see the poet inside him. The, the, the fact did. that he opened up as an adult man and really just started to, you know, really just open up as a human being as a man as a journalist as a writer as a i mean because he journaled all the time you know not journalists and press but just different i saw that that maturity you know not that we've aged but he was really aging gracefully you know intellectually i thought I agree. from the person that i met you know in 83 all shy and trying to show off because he already had you know notoriety um but Wow, what a journey! Yeah, this is that's the thing that I love hearing from all of you. And you guys saw him the last month before he passed. Yeah, with, about with, six weeks. With, yeah, with Vanity passing, you know, you yep. guys all gathered and to hear the stories mm -hmm. of you and Jill and everybody talking about yep. what you guys experienced and, and to see him maturing, but at the same time, I know you've all said this publicly and privately, mm -hmm. is that he there was something wrong, right? Seth tell me, there. tell mm -hmm. me about this because I know that this is, and again, if you don't mind me talking, ask me. No, that's me. fine. I, I know I, you came, you I like. came here to you to ask me questions, <laughs> yes. and I'm throwing questions back at you because this is the stuff that I think people want to know. They don't right. care about me. Right. My stuff is always about. Well, I mean, <laughs> but they I do care about honestly, you. Honestly, people don't. They're they're going to fast forward through the first crap of my story. That's not get, true. I'm telling you now, people do not care what they're here. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm always this underdog who's just giddy that I get. To talk to you guys and so your stories are what people read these books for they don't read i, I literally like i said less of me in there is better mm. hearing you guys telling the stories it's true and i don't and I'm, I'm totally good with that because i'm just i'm a nerd who was lucky enough to talk to mm. a bunch of people and did a little mm. research so what was it like at the end when you saw him well we went out to san francisco and oakland uh that's how Seth and I first met, mm -hmm. it was thanks to Jill Jones. Mm -hmm. When this all happened, it was, you know, just a nightmare. And uh, I got calls from Susan and Brenda and Jill, and they were screaming. And my first thought was something happened to a fan, you know, and that's that. I even did something on social media, you know, about, no, oh, he's fine. And then we find out what happened. So, I mean, and prior to that, I mean, it was shocking, right? So prior to that, just six weeks prior, Denise passes away. I know. And that was... A shock to my system because, you know, I felt like I lost a piece of myself when that happened. And uh, and then people thought it was me. I started reading, you know, social media. No, oh, I'm watching Purple Rain and she's dead. And I was like, you know, I passed out in my living room too that day. I was just like, what was going on? So I get a phone call from Jill and she said that she's going to drive up to San Francisco to the memorial of Vanity, Vanity Denise. Right. And I said, why don't we just fly? That's a long drive. And she goes, no, it's going to be a nice drive. She goes, and my friend, you know, my brother Seth is coming in and someone else. And I said, 
okay, I'll go with you. Let's just drive. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, uh, then Prince arranged for us to go see him do the piano Mm -hmm. and microphone tour at the Paramount. Yep. He announced us on the marquee. I have a screenshot of that. Oh, he announced yeah, on Twitter, our, yeah. Yeah, Apple yeah. and BB and Vashti. Vashti, welcome. Which was what he called Susan. And we sit and there. JJ. JJ. Yeah, and right. we sit there in the audience and he announces us. Of course, people are looking and then we couldn't keep from crying. Not bad. Oh, we were so sad for him losing Denise. Right. You know. Yeah. And then from there. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, some songs for her yes. right, right. that oh. night. Right. And I think that's when we all kind of fell apart. Yes, we were crying. And it was like, we oh were all God. sitting in a row. And uh, yeah. And he, he sang Beautiful Ones. Mm-hmm. And he sang um, one of his later songs. Mm, I don't remember. Uh, it was a blur to me. I was yeah. just traumatized. Mm-hmm. Something about uh, I love you, but I... I don't, don't trust, trust you. you anymore. Right. We were in love in the good old days. Mm-hmm. You oh. were my favorite protege and blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, and then man. when he got to the end, he said, and now she's gone. Yeah. And we just went. Oh. See, this is why I love the fact that you two are doing this podcast. Yeah. And I know I wasn't asking questions of you, but yeah. you bring a thing into flavor into this. Yes, that she does. That adds to what she does and you guys bounce yeah. off. And I, yeah. I enjoy this. Yeah. You He's know, just a you. plethora of, you know. Knowledge. He's representing music. the rest of us who, who are, you know, who, are, who like yeah. want to know more. And yeah, I have, I have a follow up question with this mm-hmm. with Denise. Did you guys always get along? I met her through little Susan. She, uh, little Susan arranged a lunch, I mean, a dinner. She said she wanted to meet me. So I took out Vanity to a place mm-hmm. called Le Serre on Ventura Boulevard. It was her favorite French restaurant. When, when was this? When? This was like 1984. Okay, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. it was during Purple Rain? Or? Yeah, during. 83, 84. Okay. Yeah, we had okay. already come back from L.A. It was January or something. Okay. And um, I met her. She was lovely. Nice. Really beautiful. And then the story, all of a sudden, I, she goes, so what are you doing next? I said, oh, I'm supposed to do a movie called The Last Dragon. I said, uh, Barry Gordy just gave me the script. And I met with Suzanne DePass. Mm-hmm. And then she just, this face was just like a, and she gets up. <gasps> And she goes to the phone booth and she calls Barry Gordy. And then she goes on and the whole restaurant heard the expletives. Mm. Whoa. I was just like, oh, wow. holy. And then Susan was just like, she was just eating. I remember she was just like, you know, and I remember I was just sitting there. I was like, maybe I shouldn't have said that. She's going to be, is she? Because she, she was at Motown. Yeah. Denise, uh, Denise was at Motown. Suzanne DePass wanted to sign me at Motown. So I told Prince, I said, hey, look. I've got this new movie. Came to my apartment. I go, it's called The Last Dragon. I'm going to be the first Mexican at Motown. And he just looks at me like the way you're looking at me. He says, is it better than our movie? I go, no. I go, but there's a cool scene where she drops from the st- from the c- ceiling and the stage. He grabs a script and he kicks it. He drop kicks it and it flies up in the air and it all like a little dove. He goes, you're not going to be in that. And that was it. I wasn't in it. He kept you from doing a, a lot number, of uh, several of things. things. Yeah, yep. Saturday, Saturday Night Live. Live. Yes, yep, of course, because I was going to do a funny skit with Eddie Murphy, who had already stepped out. He goes, I'll come back and do it as a guest with you. I wanted to do a scene from uh, 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 Virginia Woolf. Okay. Padded suits were older and belligerent and drinking and fighting and shut up. Like a that kind of a thing. Purple Rain. Yes, it's humor. He didn't think it was funny. I go, it's humor. It's Eddie Murphy. I had to go pitch the story to him and the three managers, and the managers were laughing, and he was just sitting there like, "Wow!" <laughs> I did the whole skit and everything, so yeah, all those kind of things. But anyways, so even with press and stuff, he had to, he really kept you guys. Well, he for the, with press, I was just, I really felt like I was his mouthpiece because he had me do press all over the world. I publicized all the four albums that came out, you know, from the movie, uh, you know, the time I would talk about the soundtrack, and you know. You had, the, you know, the modern airs, and mm-hmm. I was doing all the interviews because he didn't talk to the press. Right. So then I went worldwide twice to pro- promote the music and promote the movie, and then went out with Susan and Brenda. So I was gone for about a year for free. Oh, jeez. For free. <laughs> wow. I just got per diem. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So my anal cavity hurts sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> But purple I'm bummed. Pain. 
<laughs> <laughs> purple paint. Oh That's yeah. Amazing. Oh yeah. Wow. But going back to seeing him last, right? It was yeah. it was very difficult. You know, we ended up going to a nightclub. He announced mm -hmm. us at the nightclub. We sat with him. Seth saw him. I saw him. He looked really thin. I sat next to him. This way, I put my arm, you know, here. He was wearing a uh, really thick beaded sequin jacket. And then I put my hand on his knee, just talking to him. He said, how do you feel? How are you feeling? I could feel his leg was a little thin. And he didn't flinch. But he says, uh, some people say that I look too thin. I said, really? I go, what do you think? He just shrugged. You know, and then I made him laugh. He called me a clown. And we just joked around, but we knew something was wrong. We get up. It's Susan, Jill, and myself, and Jill says, something's wrong with him. Something's not right. And she had this dialogue. The next thing you know, remember, he comes in, he puts his face over here, he goes, y'all talking about me? We were like, yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. And then he just walked away, you know. Mm -hmm. And then six weeks after that, it was like our biggest nightmare. Yeah. Still hard to believe. I, I, and I said this without crying. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough. I, I, I it's... <sighs> I've said this before. It's it's I should he should have been an elder statesman, teaching with all the stuff. You okay? Yeah, I'm just shaking. Yeah, I bet. Well, you knew him and you cared for him. You yeah. loved him. And, we were family. And you didn't date him. No, we were but, family. And I think one of the things I enjoy about you is that you don't come in saying, "Oh, we dated," or and you 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 go from the start from from the start. You said we never dated. Yeah. Our romance was on the screen. Mm -hmm. And and brother sister type thing. Yeah. And I think that's because a lot of people say, well, not, not just a prince, but in Hollywood in general, oh, yeah, you know, I was intimate with this person. And you don't do that. Yeah. And I always respect that because they're not bringing some sort of um, imaginary love story. Right. That, uh, you know, the love story you guys had was mm -hmm. on screen, mm -hmm. which makes me sad that Graffiti Bridge ended up being the way it was. Because yes. I think the difference between Purple Rain and Graffiti Bridge is there was a reality to Purple Rain. Mm -hmm. It was grungy. Right. It was dirty. It was fairly real. This is the story of these guys. Mm -hmm. And there was a rivalry in there. And even though Prince was the guy overseeing mm -hmm. everything, a lot of this could happen. Yeah. Right. Graffiti Bridge is done on a sound set, a sound stage, and, and you don't have that sort of mm -hmm. um, realistic stuff. You right. know, it wasn't it's it true. wasn't like that. Yeah. And and there was a, a feeling of this is a dream. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think there was, I was talking about this yesterday. There was a, just the sound of it. It was different. And, yeah. and, and not that he, he had to do the same thing because you can always do different, you know, he changed, but there was, it was not rooted in mm -hmm. a story. And we wanted to see you. You want to see where did this love story go? Right. And, and <laughs> you're curious whether, even if you're mentioned, mm -hmm. it's almost as if this was just planted in a new place. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no. No Wendy Lisa, there's no Bobby, there's no mm -hmm. Oh, they weren't in it? No. 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 Oh. No. This is the thing. I don't remember. Yeah. I saw I yeah. saw it. I was like, this oh. this is some of it. The people, the the time was in it. Yeah. And Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis are in this. Yeah. Oh. They weren't in they weren't in Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Oh wow. So it's like all these things that were just different, and you're going, This is not the linking thing we expect. Yeah. Right. When you go to sequel, you want to see these people. Right. And, yeah. and to miss this stuff. I think was a um, it had some great music to it, mm -hmm. yeah. and I love Mavis Staples, and yeah. you know you know all the things because his of, mother exactly his yeah. mother was in there, and and so you you have the George yeah. Clinton and stuff like this, but there was just something missing, which is the thread of William Blinn. Well, and it, it could have easily been a Al story of, of you guys dealing with the fact that you know, and this people forget that. That sequel happened six years later. Mm -hmm. Not that long. Mm -hmm. yeah. To us, it was like the time is going, ah, Purple Rain was so long ago. It's not six years. Right. You could have been, you guys were estranged. Mm -hmm. You came back into his life to kind of, you know, maybe whatever it was. Right. <clears throat> that, that wasn't the story they followed. Yeah. And it was yeah. almost like, I almost feel like he tacked on the fact that it was a relationship with Purple Rain when it, there wasn't really a through line to me. Right. That's really, there was no, no story It was structure. a different story. And did, did he say... He said he wrote it with Kim Basinger. Yeah, Basinger? originally that's yeah. what we yeah. heard. But again, that's a different movie altogether. Yeah. It's it's. Yeah. I think to to tie it in a purple rain was was a stretch at times mm -hmm. because yeah. he had the time in there, and I get yeah. that, you know. And and there's I love the time. Yeah. And I I think the time is a powerful band, mm -hmm. and you know, but it just it just didn't seem to me to be continuity. Well, yes, yeah. linked by the soul. Right, yeah. you're I, right. I think there was something missing with that, and I think that. You being there would have changed, you know. You could have then said, "This is a very through line with yeah. this," and I didn't mm. see that. So. Yeah, yeah. 
but you have your... Well, I want to, um, just a couple of, of, of things. Yes, um, I want to, just really fast, in this one particularly, I was... I thoroughly enjoy it because yeah, this is my favorite you. era. Thank you. This, this. <laughs> this is my favorite era. Do you ever think there'll be a prequel book to this? My dream. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, I'm, I the in in the 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 book that just came out, the paperback of this, mm-hmm. it goes yep. into the the. Uh, there's a chapter in here. You guys haven't even seen because I just gave you these things. Yeah. There's a chapter that is. is from 80, the next book is 87, 88. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, and there's a chapter in here that I put that's not in the other books um, that's going to be in the next book. It's what happened after the Black Album got canceled, mm-hmm. which is, mm-hmm. and then the first week or two of recording mm-hmm. Love Sexy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want to do for the next book. What I'd like to do, I mean, my dream would be to do 87, 88, and maybe even 89, mm-hmm. taking it to the end of the decade. Okay. And if my arms hold up, mm-hmm. which I'm dealing with tendonitis <laughs> and stuff like this, um, I would love to write 1980 to 1982. Yeah. Because that's yeah. the origin story. Yeah. Yep. That's the that's, prequel. Exactly. Yep. That's where he comes from behind, where he's just a guy in tight, in, 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 in uh, spandex. Sp- and, exactly. And tight. In, in, and exactly. In a, in a bikini underwear. Bikini underwear and, and, and leg, leg warmers. warmers. Right. And you, this is the guy that gave, went to being wearing a suit. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and you see, there's such a, like you've said, the range of knowing him at this right. age to this age. Same thing, knowing yeah. him at, yep. at yeah. that age. I would evolution. Love to, I would love to because that's where the time came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's where um, Lisa joined the band. Mm-hmm. It's when it's it's uh, Des is in there mm-hmm. and Andre. And by the way, did a great interview with Andre. That was fun. Was that? Did a great interview. with Oh, Andre. that was fun. Love we got that. to sing together. Yeah, I, I I'm enjoying. I, I'm loving these things. Just to so know, as a fan, oh, I'm loving these things. But anyway, <laughs> that's that's beside the point. Um, I would love to. I, yeah. it, but again, I'm, you know, I, it's a matter of it, these things take two or three years to yeah. do solidly. Yeah. And I don't want to slap something together. I would mm-hmm. rather not put out something than have it slapped together. Yeah. Right. What gotcha. I've also said, I've said out there is if there's people in an era that know this stuff, mm-hmm. I will write a book with somebody. I have no problem with co-writing a book with somebody mm-hmm. yeah. if they come to me with, with the, the research done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The big thing is is making sure you have all the dates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And right. these things are, you know, they, they live and die on the dates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the skeleton. Yeah. And and the interviews and the stories are what the meat that hangs off the skeleton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is, it, it without the dates, it would be just like another book. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing to me about these things is to make it so that it's not just dates, but mm-hmm. it's also the story. You can go from, you can read the book in two ways. You can read it from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Usually people, and I, you know, when you, you get the book, I'm sure you looked up your birthday or you looked up where you, what, where you are in the book, where you are, where Mm -hmm. you are in the book. And and I think everybody's going to be looking up their, their birthdays, their anniversaries. And there's things, it's it's one of these books you can go to and say, I want to read about this song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see a bigger picture, step back and see how that song fits into the continuity of this prince. Yeah. And not just in the book, but in his career, Mm -hmm. because there's times I mentioned he did this later, five, six years later, yeah. or ten years later. Yeah. Or this came from here. Yeah. I think, and this is a snapshot to yeah. that mm-hmm. that era. Yeah. I I, I love the. F- I'm a big fan of studio session books, whether yeah. the Beatles right. or whoever it is. I love doing. That. I love looking yeah. at this stuff, and so I, I kind of wrote the book I wanted to write. I want mm-hmm. to read. So. so this one just came out. This is the paperback version. Correct. Correct. And um, what makes this more different. S- different. There okay. you go. The the um there is some inf- additional information mm-hmm. in there where I after the book came out, oftentimes the book that comes out in hardback is sort of the peer review. Yeah. Um, because nobody knows what's in there. And I'll have some people like Susie Davis came to me and said, I wrote a journal during Purple Rain tour. Yeah. The Purple Rain tour. Yeah. And and I will let you see that. And yeah. you can see where we were recording mm-hmm. in different cities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'll get her stories, and I added that to the paperback. So it's a little, it's about the same, same, um, same content in, mm-hmm. in in some ways. But there's an extra chapter. The mm-hmm. thing is, is there's an extra mm-hmm. chapter at the end that is from the next book. Yep. Look and for this guy. It says there Got on the it. cover mm-hmm. that it's 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 something that's never been seen before. Okay. And it's a t- it's a sneak preview of the next book in the series, and that next book won't come out for a while. So this is. As close as you're going to get to seeing what's coming, but the next book has 
this stuff is uh, um, about the Black Album when mm -hmm. he canceled it. So I've interviewed Ingrid Chavez mm -hmm. and, um, um, gosh, who else is in this thing? Uh, Alan Leeds, um, Matt Fink, uh, Levi Caesar, uh, all the engineers, Eddie Miller, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Blaney, uh, Chuck Spooky. They, they talk mm -hmm. about these dates mm -hmm. and what was going on with, with Prince changing from this angry album he came out was mm -hmm. want to come out with and then saying no mm -hmm. and then coming out with what he is a spiritual revolution ro uh, ro you know uh, with he was seeing a different way to treat people and a different way mm -hmm. to to he mm -hmm. was like i was following something dark i didn't like that mm -hmm. and yeah. so i wanted to change that so love sexy is sort of a his response to when he was felt he was going in a dark place and it's about the first week or so of recording half the album was recorded in a, in a week mm -hmm. wow and it's fascinating to see <laughs> what was going on and, and and i also talked to the people that were there when the black album got canceled which mm -hmm. is um he had a kind of naive view that he would just get all these things back and yeah. you know they were they were shipped out yeah and people are like you know the one of these is going to fall off the one of these boxes is going to fall off a truck yeah mm -hmm. you know this mm -hmm. and he's like no 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 they'll come back and levi says you know he's a brilliant man but did not understand that that no people want this album, yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. so it's it's it, to me I was really I once I finished that chapter I was like going I want to keep writing right wanna, it's addictive yeah. I wanna it's, write rich. More. Yeah. I it's wanna rich I want to write more and 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 so I'm I'm now working on it and okay. and uh, again it'll be another year or two before it's done at least because I want to make sure when you do it and and you'll see this when you get your book mm -hmm. I suggest writing it and then not looking at it for two or three weeks mm -hmm. and then going back to go back to it and saying mm -hmm. what have i written right because you're going to see it in a whole new light That's right mm -hmm. and you're going to think oh my gosh i say this twice i don't need this right and, Got it. and have mm -hmm. people read it yes yeah. i can't say that enough i've had 12 to 15 people read my books including mm -hmm. like i said my wife yeah and it is the best thing to hear and and listen to mm -hmm. what people say because people may say you know this this doesn't make sense and if mm -hmm. they, if people are saying <laughs> doesn't make sense the public take it you yeah. take it in and just go okay and nobody has the first draft usually sucks mm -hmm. across the board mm -hmm. and i i can't say that enough is uh, i've there's so many drafts that go through this or any book that that you read if it's a good book they probably mm -hmm. have had people you know make sure it's your voice yeah. don't right. let somebody else give you right. their voice don't yeah. let say somebody say you're using 50 cent words here apollonia you right. shouldn't yeah. do that yeah you know if yeah. that's the word you want to use right. use it yeah. Yeah. but make sure it makes sense and find a way to um one of the things somebody told me one time with, with screenwriting is in, when you're writing something get in as late as you can and leave as early as you can mm -hmm. and that way you're, you're telling the story here almost there's a lot of crap that comes before that you don't yeah. need mm -hmm. and yeah. get me into the room and Got then it. get me out of the room and but mm -hmm. leave me you know leave each chapter hanging i used to read spy novels and and i would always i'm, I'm, I'm a reader and i remember reading books at night and going I'm going to read to the end of the chapter mm -hmm. and then I'm going to sleep. Right. And then I get to the end of the chapter and James Bond lays down in his bed and he's closed his eyes and he feels the cold steel of a gun against his head. And you're like, Oh, now I got to read the next chapter. <laughs> no, you did this to me. And so that, that find a way to make the person mm -hmm. go, Oh, I want to read more. Continue, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and once you can, once you can hook them, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what you do is whether it was with a song or with a movie mm -hmm. or with yeah. a, a script or a book. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's finding a way to to um, bring. And also, the other thing I, I tell people constantly is don't just write a. And I don't think you ever would, but don't write a surface book. Tell me how you feel. Mm -hmm. Tell me, yeah. take me inside you and let me hear your internal dialogue of why you are in pain, mm -hmm. why you were hurting, what this brought up, and, mm -hmm. and, and make it so that I'm getting to know you in a way that. Right, character development. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got a hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but just letting me know, because that's what I want to do with mm -hmm. this, is finding the things you guys said. Right. And I would put quotes in there from different places, not necessarily the ones I interviewed, but if there's a great quote out there, mm -hmm. I want to use it. I don't. I don't credit. I, there's a 50 pages of credits at the end of yeah. these books of who did this stuff because I want people to go back to those interviews yeah. and read. Mm -hmm. Apollonia said this here. Yeah. Here's a whole article about yeah. that. Right. She'll yeah. talk about this. Yeah. And I'll tell people guide them to that because mm -hmm. I, I can't tell everything. But here's here's a, uh, you know 2,000 references that you can go back and find more of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I find that fascinating to me. Yeah. So I always make sure I credit people when they've done something because i want to make sure that if somebody wrote an article i don't want to choose a quote from them i mm -hmm. want to make sure that there's right. that they get 
some props. Yeah. Shine mm. a light on, and the, half this book stuff, somebody said to me once, this isn't just about Prince, this is about the people around him. I'm like, mm. Mm, yes, mm-hmm. yeah. because it's, it's like a, a, a crime scene thing. Again, if something happens, you go and ask the people who are closest to the people. Right. And they'll tell you a story. And like, uh, um, uh, what's the movie that, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's a Japanese movie that, that um, the story is told from different perspectives. Mm. And uh, Rashomon. Mm. And it's, this person tells a story, this person tells a story. All the stories are different, but mm-hmm. there's similarities. And mm-hmm. you find that yeah. that blend. You yeah, know? Right. That I'm looking thread. forward to seeing what you write. I, oh, I, I, me I, too. <laughs> you, you're, like I said, you're very outspoken. You are somebody that is, you are, it's, you are a person that's good to have on your side. I would rather have you on my side <laughs> than have you as my enemy. <laughs> you, there's people like you that are, and I, I adore that about you because you are very vocal. You make sure that people know if you're upset with somebody, mm-hmm. they'll know it. Mm-hmm. If you're happy with somebody, they'll know it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's a very healthy attitude to have. People know where they stand with you. I think I've been around Jill Jones a long time now. That I've, <laughs> that's Jill's another, me. Yeah. Jill's a solid person like that. Yeah. You always want to have Jill on your side. Yeah, yeah. great because teacher. If, if Jill's not on your side, you'll know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 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 people yeah. and and that's a good thing to have is yeah. because transparent. You want to have that transparency. Mm-hmm. You want to have that honesty and and. But when they're on your side, they will advocate for you right. so yeah. much. Yeah. You've advocated for me so yeah. much by, like I said, getting Susan to talk to me. I, mm-hmm. I was like going, that's that's this is uncharted territory when. Right. When, when and I, I've told, I've said publicly many times. Uh, let me tell you one other thing. I'm, I know I'm smoke no, no. up your smoke up your ass no. like crazy here. <laughs> um, but the, one of the ways that you have done something for me that I still think about is with the the Sheila um, benefit. Oh yeah, you, know, you filmed it. Yes, and yep. and you had recommended me to be the director for this documentary, and we never came up with the documentary. Right, never happened, but. I was at all the rehearsals. This is for 2003, December mm-hmm. 2003, for the Sheila E. Um, family family, family dance. Thing. And, and it was Apollonia played, uh, sang. and uh, I brought those people. I yes, brought Carmen. You, exactly. I Carmen hosted Patty. it. Patty. And you had, you had yeah, uh, Patty LaBelle was there. Right. It was an amazing night. I These mean, were my friends. It was, I brought it, makeup people. The you whole did an crew. amazing job getting people. Uh, I was but, helping. But it was, it, was, it was a really, the revolution play for the first time yeah. in years. It was an, a night like I don't remember. I'm, and I was I was at the rehearsals and I was at the mm-hmm. night and, and it was seeing all you guys get together and play and mm-hmm. sing all the thinking, mm-hmm. is Prince going to show up? I don't That's, know. <laughs> everybody thought we were all looking. Yeah. yeah. And there was always the rumor that he's going to come in. Right. Was, I think there was a thing set up for him just in case yeah. he did. And it would have been cool if he did. But it was like, and, and people came there kind of hoping he would. You know, but to see him come out and play with Madhouse and play, right. with, uh, play with you, it would have been so fun. Great. And Jill played and, and yeah. sung. But it was, and you were the one that said, I know a guy. And that's always right. the phrase that gets us into trouble. Yeah. I know a guy. Right. Um, but you you brought me in there and, and I'm I'm you made I made connections with so many people that day. because of that. But that's why I brought you because of the book. I wanted to set so, you up with it the was so nice. My and, purple and, and, family. and you and I didn't know each other by that. That was two thousand three. <clears throat> mm-hmm. We known each other some, but I mean I guess a couple of years, a good couple right. of years, but since the early nineties, I think. Yeah. I think but but you you said I, I, I trust this guy to come in here and not embarrass me. Not make an ass out of himself, you know, because that, when you yeah. anybody and I recommend people for jobs and something. There's always the fear of is this person going to drop the ball? Right. No, I had and full confidence you, and you did, in you, and it was great. And, and and I was like, I was elated because I have uh, footage of you uh, singing with the band, mm-hmm. rehearsing, mm-hmm. and and stuff like this. And it's all just sitting there, and I'm like, this is such good stuff. I wish the whole thing had come out and done, you know, because it would. It's a great show, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, we could do something with it, with my bits. We have ideas yeah. we'll discuss it's, later. It was, it was so, it's so fun. It's, it's fun seeing all this stuff. It was stuff a great that, show. Yeah. It was a great time. Yeah. I, did, I worked very hard uh, to help Sheila to come up with a really great show. You know, uh, I'm not saying I produced it, but I just, you know, busted my tail to put that show together for her, with her, with all my friends, you know, because I believed in what she was doing at the time, so. Yeah. Well... I just want to say that this has been a great, great time. I love this. And yeah. you're more than welcome anytime to come back. Yes, please. And uh, um, I want to also let everybody know, just released when? Uh, Oct- October 15th. October 15th. 15th. Right. Paperback version of Prince 
and the Parade and Sign of the Time studio sessions 1985 to 1986, which also includes a sneak preview of the next book yep. in the Prince studio session series. Do yourself a favor and get it. This is critically acclaimed, critically acclaimed, <laughs> yes. and fan approved. <laughs> well, and Elton John wrote the the and Elton John wrote the, the forward, forward yeah. who we love which so I, much. Which I have to. I will thank Matthew Beaton who set me up with Elton John. Right, first. I think I read that. And and I will, to my grave, yeah. go there praising Matthew, Matthew. Beaton for doing this. I praise him for his voice. I love his voice. He's got a sexy voice. Uh, uh, he's a great guy. I've known, I've known Matthew for years. But he he was the one that set me up with Elton John. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, you almost don't get bigger than that. Yeah. And, yeah. and so the idea that Elton John would have not only read my book, but said, you know, I enjoy this enough that I will I will scratch down a few, a few things for you. And, yeah. and, his, and if you read it, his um, forward is so good because he talks about how Prince dogged him out. Yeah, wow. Mm. And you're going, um, sorry, I'm chewing a mint. Okay. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, no. um, um, I didn't think I was talking for a second. But he, uh, Elton John, was dogged out by Prince. He yeah. introduced himself. Yeah. Hi, I'm Elton John. And Prince said, you know, that's <laughs> terrible. And you're going, oh my God, there's Elton John. <laughs> I did. I knew about that later, but is it crazy in Hawaii? You know, went to see Elton yeah. John, and he's wearing a purple coat. So I'm backstage, and I always, when I see him, I'm like, "Your Highness," mm-hmm. I yeah. bow, right? Yeah. I said, "Hey, Prince called. He wants his coat back," and he just kind of like, "It's a beautiful coat." I try to clean it up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "I yeah. love." Ooh. I was like, "Oh, what did I?" Um, we are coming out. I was funny. My I know by the time this airs, it will have happened. But Elton's playing in in Los Angeles. In, yes. In, yeah. I'm taking my daughter. We're taking my daughter for the. It's her first concert. Mm-hmm. Her first concert ever. Really, is going to see Elton John. Wow. Now it's a big Dodger Stadium, and we've got the, right. the highest seats in the house, so yeah. we're nowhere near. But this is going to be her first show ever. Wow, and nice. that's exciting. That that to bring her in, and I don't think she understands Elton John. Yeah, right. you know he's yeah. he's royalty. Wow, you know, so that was very exciting. So. Well, so then cool. what I think we're going to do in closing is maybe a lucky person, a lucky fan. Might oh. get a. We're gonna have him autograph all of these. Yes. And maybe somebody will get a copy. We do Happy giveaways. Do yeah, to the fans. And um, we will see you next time. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Wow, this show went by so fast. Yes. There's so much more that we wanted to ask you and questions that we have, but next time. Yeah. When you so come this back. is going to be yeah. part one. We'll yeah. have Dwayne come back, yes. who is the keeper of the vault. Yeah. That's what we we do say. He is, you know, the man that's knowledgeable, who is taking care of all the beautiful things that Prince has in the vault, because Dwayne is so lovely and such a trustworthy human being that uh, I'm just so honored that you're doing that. This is an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dwayne. This is great. Thank you. I I love you guys, and I'm I'm so happy to be here. So thank you. Thank Thank you. you. We love you. Thank you, Mr. Seth. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. We love you. We love you guys. Thank you. All right. Speaking of the 1999 tour and just that period, uh, probably around 83, I think anyone that was involved with the Prince organization at that time talked about the friction that started going on between Prince and Vanity's personal relationship. Hmm. How did that affect the group? Well, we were okay, (laughs) but... Then we still had to be a part of that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even though it was him and her. Mm-hmm. It, it was all three of us and him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We yeah. had to deal with it as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It was it was um, it was concerning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was concerning because um, there was um, questions as to. It was obvious that something was going to give. Mm-hmm. We didn't know precisely in what direction, mm-hmm. and you know how and and what was going to wind up happening, but. Uh, <clears throat> there was something that was there was going to be a change we could feel a change coming mm. and um how it was going to manifest itself remained to be seen yeah um alan leeds um said in a book that i read um he talked about how he had a lot of respect for susan because she maintained such grace through kind of like the whole thing how how did you do that how'd you maintain yourself through just the stuff that was going on yeah and you had known him like almost longer than anybody else there mm-hmm. um i think it has a lot to do with my upbringing mm-hmm. i was very grounded and 
there was a purpose mm -hmm. being there. Mm -hmm. So I try to serve that purpose and stay focused. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the infamous story <laughs> <laughs> about the uh, fight between you and Denise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we talked about it when he came on the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Damn, Brenda. <laughs> Whoa, she did what? What do you think like led up to a point where it got that intense? Um, first of all, I have to say that our show, mm -hmm. this is on, on the 1999 tour, yeah. tour yeah. was only 15 minutes long. Yeah. Mm. 15, maybe 20 minutes long, depending on how fast Jelly Bean played. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is going to be quick. <laughs> I've listened to a, you know, a few of the past tapes that uh -huh. I still have uh -huh. of uh, a couple of our shows that came off the soundboard, you uh -huh. know. And um, going into, you know, like uh, one of the songs I remember was like, the count off was like, one, two, three, four. And it, was like, <laughs> it was almost like, you know, oh. in fast motion, you know, I don't know how the heck we were able to do but, you know, once it started and the yeah. band started, and, you know, sometimes I used to think, you know, are they doing this on purpose? Yeah. To see if we could make it through, you know, or, uh -huh. you know, it was, it was tough. But um, so at the point of 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. you're just getting warmed up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. that whole first beginnings is, you know, the adrenaline yeah. running. Yeah. You know, being on stage, you know, mm -hmm. when you're doing a show like Joe Louis Arena in mm -hmm. Detroit. What is it? Thirty, forty thousand yeah, people, or something. More like sixty thousand. It was people just that, night, that one oh, night. Oh my yeah. gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah. And here we are. These. I was three, at that show. You were. Yeah. I was. I was there. Mm -hmm. I'm a ticket here we star. are, three of us on the stage. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not protected. Feeling, you know, even like around us, we only had lingerie on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and here we are trying to work that whole big stage. <laughs> And we kept being told, oh, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there. But you didn't, you know, we didn't see it until <laughs> the curtain rose and right. we're standing on the stage. Right. And they announce wow. us. Uh -huh. And the sound uh -huh. of 60,000 people uh -huh. screaming for you uh -huh. is like every hair on my body went pow. Uh -huh. And it just stood on end. And, and, and also my second immediate thought was, I hope they like us uh -huh. <laughs> because, uh -huh. yeah. you know, it's a lot of people out there, you know, and I don't want to be booed off the stage by 60,000 people, but um, I hope they enjoy the show. And, um, but uh, anyway, so you, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline flowing mm -hmm. going, going on there. And we'd been on the tour for a while. This, this was mm -hmm. in the South. Okay. I want to say it was North Carolina, okay. South Carolina okay. that this happened. And um, there are times that you get a blank. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're reciting, you're mm -hmm. singing, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you forget a word. <laughs> and that's what... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yep. And that's what happened that night. Uh -huh. We were mm -hmm. doing If a Girl Answers. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I forgot like a... Th <laughs> <laughs> a three-word stanza, uh -huh. you know, and but I jumped in and um, covered myself yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it threw Vanity off uh -huh. so mm. much, mm. and she couldn't come back quick enough mm. to do, you know, uh -huh. and. And in that case, you know, you, you mm. think of something to say real quick or you just dance. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you just move and you and you goof. Or you like, uh yeah. you know, <laughs> and you, or you just you make some kind of yeah, baby. <laughs> something. <laughs> I forgot my word, but, you know, but <laughs> or you can say like you know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, until all of a sudden it comes back to you, you right. know. But um this was her first experience of this happening. Uh -huh. So um when she got off the stage, when we got off the stage um, there was, I think there was one point on the stage where she bumped me, mm. you know, um, kind of thing, mm. just mm. to let me know that mm. she was not happy. Mm -hmm. And and I remember thinking to myself, okay, so what's going to happen when we get off this stage? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> punk. <laughs> yes, punk. Punk. That's it. <laughs> it's happening. Oh, you want official Apollonia merchandise? Visit ApolloniaCotero.store and ApolloniaCotero.com.